Hello everyone, welcome to soundproofguide.com. In this video, I'll be talking about weather stripping and where and which one to apply around a door to make it a lot more soundproof because really, a door is not that difficult to seal up all those cracks. There is a way to do it with acoustical sealant, video right up here, but there is also a really easy way to do it with a weather strip and not all weather strips are built the same and they don't all work the same. One of the most important thing that you should know is to get one that is self-adhesive. Most of them are, but you just never know. Just make sure that the one that you get is self-adhesive. And the one that I always recommend for this type of application is this type of weather stripping. This is a rubber, basically just a rubber self-adhesive weather strip that can separate. As you can see, you can separate it. The reason why I recommend this one is most doors, most places where you will be applying it onto the door, this is the section that you'll want to apply it with, just half of it. And then there's another section of the door where you can apply and it, w it just works better with the entire section because you're putting it in a space where it is a lot wider and can accommodate that wide space. But one section of the door, it's perfect if you just split it up and you have double the amount of weather strip. I'll have a link in the description below. So let's go and see how to apply it correctly. All right, so this is the door that I will be applying the weather stripping on and this is the section right here where the weather stripping will be applied. And the reason for that is when you close the door, it will press onto this interior frame and the weather strip is going to create a seal on the door so the door doesn't do this as much. It doesn't rattle around. And one problem I found on this particular door is that, I don't know if you can see in the video, but look at that space. Obviously something happened and the finished nails are pretty well gone. So you'll need to fix this before applying your weather strip. Also, even if it is not separated quite this much, you will still want to realign it as best as you can or press it down if you cannot move it and apply at least another couple of finished nails if the separation is big enough. And you'll be able to notice just by seeing it. If it's just a very, very small crack, probably nothing really needs to be done other than perhaps applying some sealant, acoustical sealant or acoustical caulking around this area just to seal it up completely and then add your weather stripping because the reason for the caulking is basically more so to seal this crack and from sound not to come from this room outside and the weather strip is more so to create a better seal when the door is closed because if the doors close and it does that there's quite a gap between the door and this interior frame and that is what you want to eliminate with the weather strip. So first we'll just take a that's that's great. So first what you'll want to do is take some finished nails and just realign this if it is out of alignment and apply a few nails just to bring it back to what it should be. That's pretty good. And this will make quite a difference with sealing that crack. And one more. Now that's not going to move anymore. And now that that is back to where it should be, you'll want to use a little bit of soap and water to clean the area where you will be applying the weather strip. Now this is something that a lot of people can easily just forget because you just don't really think about it. You get your weather strip and you just want to stick it on. But the problem is, is the self-adhesive strip is going to have a hard time sticking to the surface if there's full of dust. 
So you'll want to remove all that dust before applying your weather strip. And as you can see, it wouldn't really fit if you're putting the weather strip like this with the two sections. So that is why you want to separate them. And what's nice is if you do separate them, as I said, you have double the amount. You can do more than one door, most likely with only one small roll. And it fits perfectly into this little section. And this little strip will make the door seal a lot better once it is closed. Now it's time to install the weather strip on the top of the door and just cut the, the piece of weather strip, the width of the top of the door and try to have this section down while you apply it because it will be just maybe one or two millimeters wider than the section on which you are applying the weather strip on. Having that piece facing down will definitely help. And now to apply it on the final section of the door frame. And as I said, after you wash it, make sure it is completely dry before applying the weather strip. Because if it's a little bit wet still, it will not stick properly and will just peel off. And with one strip of weather strip, I was able to literally do the entire section of the door with just one of the strips. So now that the weather strip is fully applied, you will notice that when you close the door, it will close a lot tighter and it will seal all those gaps that you saw at the beginning of the video when the door was closed, how easily it was wobbling. You'll see that now. Well, that's a doorknob. That's not quite tight, but as you can see, no wobble whatsoever on the door. So for you to easily know if you have a gap, if you're, even if your door doesn't wobble to begin with, if you turn off all the lights and then you turn on the light in the room on the other side of the door, you'll notice that light shines through where the door meets the frame. If you can see light shining through, then obviously sound will easily come through. What this weather strip does is it seals that gap around the inner casing. It makes the door close a lot tighter and it, and it seals that gap and it will stop a significant amount of sound if you do have quite a large gap. People don't realize that even if you install a solid core door, which the difference between a, a solid door and a, a hollow door is, well, usually interior doors are hollow. If you go ahead and pay a little bit of extra money to just buy one solid core door on the room that you're trying to soundproof, you don't have to outfit the entire house. If it's just one room, then it can be worth buying a solid door. All it means is the door is completely solid, solid wood through and through. So what I'm saying is even if you do have a solid core door, if you have a significant gap around the door, then it really doesn't matter all that much because sound will easily pass through. So it is very important for you to seal all those gaps. And then if you find that there's still a lot of sound coming through and you're just not satisfied, then it's time to go and look at other ways to soundproof the door. The video right up here will explain to you a lot of different ways on what works and what doesn't work when soundproofing a door. So make sure to go watch that video for a lot more tips and a lot of ways to not go about soundproofing a door because not all information out there is accurate. So another spot where you can add the weather stripping is on the back side of the door. Now this section will press against the door frame. So while the door closes, it will create a bigger seal right here. 
Now that I don't find that's very necessary if you follow the steps here and you've got the casing completely covered. If that's the case, then you should be fine and I would just move on to something else. If there's still quite a gap between the door and the frame, maybe it's an older home and there's been a lot of shifting, then you can apply a weather strip on the back side of the door. So when the door closes and hits the frame, then the weather strip will create a very solid seal around this area. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll have links in the description below of everything I talk about in this video regards of soundproofing material. Feel free to take a look at many of our other YouTube videos and also some of our articles on our website soundproofguide.com. Don't forget to click the like button if you enjoyed this video and also consider subscribing to our channel if you like our content. Also feel free to leave us a comment below if you have any soundproofing questions of your own. We will certainly try our very best to help you. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video or any other videos in our channel.